Hi, fourth grade. So today for our reading lesson, we are going to be talking about natural disasters and we're going to take a gallery walk and look at some pictures of some different natural disasters. Before we get started at, with the pictures, I want to talk about the difference between a hurricane and a tsunami. I always get confused with those two. So a hurricane is a storm in the atmosphere, whereas a tsunami is a huge tidal wave in the ocean caused by a large underthrusting earthquake. So the starting point of these two storms is very different. The hurricane is going to start above the water in the air, and the tsunami is going to start below the water, like at the ocean surface, or I'm sorry, at the ocean floor, okay, because that's where the earthquake will take place. Okay. So while we are looking at these pictures, we have three critical questions that we are going to be asking. One is, what do you observe? So throughout all of the pictures, you're going to hear me see it, say, I see, I see, I see, I see. Um, that's going to help me to make inferences. And so I might say, I think or I infer. Those are all inferences that I am making. Those are all inferences, yes, that I am making. And then questions that I have about the different pictures. Okay, so I'm going to do several of these as a model, and then I am going to give you a few to do on your own. So let's get started with our first one. So here we go. I'm going to move my picture out of the way right here. So what do you see? So I see waves. Obviously, this is the ocean. Um, there is a structure right here, and I see that the waves right here it appears that they are like right up to the height of the structure so my first question is have they evacuated this building right here and my second my inference might be that um this is going to probably be destroyed these waves look really strong um I guess that could be a question that I have too. How strong is the structure? Can the structure withstand these waves and the wind that's blowing? So this is a picture of a hurricane. Okay, let's go to our next one. Here's another picture of a hurricane. So in this picture, sorry, I'm trying to move my, so you can see me. So in this picture, I see a lot of wind. And how do I know that I see wind? I can see that the leaves on these palm trees are all blowing this direction. I can also see that the palm tree is leaning. And typically, palm trees are pretty strong and they don't typically bend like that. And for it to be leaning like that makes me think, makes me infer that the wind is pretty strong. I also see that there is a plant right here and it is almost flat to the ground. So that also makes me infer that the wind is really, really strong. Another thing that makes me infer that the wind is really strong is that there's waves like right up here, higher than this building. A question that I have is, have they evacuated this building yet? I sure hope so. Okay, I'm gonna skip those. So, <coughs> excuse me, this is another natural disaster. This is a flood. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to notice some things. The first thing I notice, I can see the tires of the vehicles, most of the vehicles anyway. So that makes me think, makes me infer that maybe this isn't so deep. Not that it's not still devastating and causing a lot of damage, but it's not as deep as it looks at first glance. I can also over, especially over right through here, I can still see like the driveway, which makes me infer that it's not so deep. Now, right over here, this looks like a minivan and I can't see the tires. I can see the mailboxes, so I know it's not as high as a mailbox, but this does look like it's deeper on this side. And the reason that I'm inferring that it's deeper on this side is that I cannot see the vehicle tires over here, but I could over here. Now this looks like they are on a slope right there. So maybe their driveway has an incline. In the black truck, I can see its tires. The white truck, the tires seem to be submerged a little more. Um, I also see a few boats. There's a boat right here. There's a boat over here. So 
I am questioning, are they next to a lake or some kind of big body of water? And I ask that for more than one reason. Um, is this flood caused by maybe a dam that the levees broke or something like that? Or is this flood caused by rainwater? Okay, let's go to our next picture. Here is our next picture. Now, there, I'll be honest, whenever I first saw this, I automatically thought, oh, it's a fire. No. Whenever I looked closer, I noticed that this right here was lava. So this is actually a volcano that has been, that has erupted. And I see that this has caused a lot of damage. Um, so I see flames over here. Do you see the bright orange over through there? And then right here, obviously, and then the lava right through here. It's destroyed this road. It is destroying this electric pole. So I am going to infer that if they have not already lost power, that they are going to lose power. I also see this black smoke, and the black smoke I know is not healthy. Um, uh, a question that I have is, have they evacuated? And another question is, <coughs> excuse me, obviously this road is not passable anymore. So is there another way to get over to this side, to the to the other side. Are there other roads that lead to that place? Okay, let's go to our next one. Okay, so this natural disaster is a tornado. And these we see in Arkansas frequently, especially during the spring. Um, also, whenever I was growing up, I grew up in Oklahoma and we called it Tornado Alley. We had several barns that were just totally flattened by tornadoes. Um, so right here, I can't really tell from this picture how far away the tornado is. So that might be a question that I ask. How far away is this tornado? How big is this tornado? Um, an inference that I could make is that these houses are going to be destroyed because they do appear to be in the line of this tornado, right in the path of it. Um, questions that I might have, have they been evacuated or or have they taken cover? Okay. Here is another picture that I have. This is a tsunami. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know how much warning you have whenever a tsunami first occurs. Um, I know that there are aftershocks, and so there will be waves coming for a long period of time. I'm not exactly sure how long. But the reason I'm questioning that is that there are still people driving up and down this road right here next to the ocean. So did they have warning? And if they did, why are they still on this road? Um, have they evacuated these people right here? I am going to make an inference. I see how high this wave is right here. And if I come like right over here, I'm going to infer that it is going to destroy several of these buildings right here. Um, a question that I might have would be what kind of structure, like is this structurally sound and can it withstand these waves, the strength of these waves? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so this is a picture of an earthquake. So obviously like this first floor is just totally demolished. Um, it has just collapsed. The, the total first floor has just collapsed in. It looks like right here that this window has been broken out. Um, I find it interesting that these windows don't appear to have been broken out. So why did it break some and not others? Um, Another question is, were they, had they already evacuated or were there people in there? Um, a, an inference that I can make is that this building will not be repaired. This building is not in, it will have to be demolished. Okay. So here's another picture of a volcano eruption. 
Um, some observations that I see, I really only see two colors. I see the bright, bright orange red color, and then I see black. So this makes me infer that this has been going on for a while because this is already black. So it looks like it's already been burned and that this is like fresh burning lava. Um, it appears that we're really close, but I'm wondering really how close we are. So that's a question that I have is how close are we to this volcano? And something else that I don't see here that I saw in the last volcano eruption is this smoke isn't black. Whereas before we saw black smoke, this, there's a little bit of like gray smoke, but this is mainly white smoke. So I wonder why that is. Why, why were, why are they different? That's interesting to me. Hmm. He looks like he's in a bit of a pickle. So this is another picture of a flood. Uh, this one's a little different than the flood that we saw before, before the truck tires, I mean, there may have been like an inch or two up the truck tires. This man, he appears to be pretty tall because look how he is compared to his entryway and compared to his door. So I would say that he's over five foot tall and this comes well above his knees. So, and right here, this bench, it doesn't look to be floating, but it looks pretty high on the bench. And it looks like it comes all the way to the base of these windows. Um, a question that I have is, why didn't he evacuate? Why is he still in that house? If there is that much flooding, did it just come down really fast? Did a levee break? Does he live near a big body of water? Did he not have time to evacuate? Um, an inference that I'm going to make is that the bottom floor of this house is destroyed because of all of the water damage as long and his landscaping and his lawn I infer that they are also destroyed okay so this one I'm not going to go over with you because this is one of the ones that you are going to be doing on your own but I want you to look at it which type of natural disaster do you think caused this damage? I want you to look at it, make some observations, start coming up with your questions, and start making inferences. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Okay, um, here is another tornado picture. So, Again, we don't know how close the tornado is, so that is a question I would have, is how close is this tornado? But it appears to be a lot wider than the last tornado, so I am going to infer that it is going to be more destructive than the last tornado, and the reason I infer that is because it does appear to be wider, and so it would have a wider path of destruction. Um, I do not see as many houses as I did. So I'm wondering if this is more of a, well, I was gonna say more of a roll area, but there's a light pole here, which makes me, you don't really see those out in the country. Um, so I don't really know. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, this is another one that you are going to do on your own, so I am not going to go over it with you. I want you to look at it. Observations, questions, and inferences. Those are the three things that you're going to be doing on your own with this one. Observations, questions, inferences. Okay, so I actually went over both of these with you already. So which natural disaster do these pictures represent? They both represent what? A flood, okay? And if we are going to compare these two, this water I'm going to infer is a lot deeper than that water. And again, 
I'm using the tires as my measuring point here and I do not see his knees and it's all the way up to the windows right here. Whereas you can see the windows over here um, and right there and it's not anywhere near the windows. So I am going to infer that this one is a lot deeper. Um, evacuation would be my question. Obviously he did not evacuate. So my question is why? And did these people evacuate? There are a lot of vehicles, so I'm, I'm assuming that they probably didn't. I'm making an inference that they probably didn't evacuate. Okay. We also looked at both of these, and we talked about both of them being volcano eruptions. Again, some things that I noticed. This is more the fire, where this is more the lava. Um, the black smoke, maybe that's why this smoke is black, because of the fire. I can make that inference. And this smoke has more of the lava, and so it's the white or the gray. Um, this one also looks like it had been burning for a while, where this one looks pretty new. Okay. Okay, we talked about these as well, the two tornadoes. Again, this one seems like we can't tell distance, so it's really not fair to say this, but I'm still going to make this inference. This one does not seem to be as wide as this one, so I am going to infer that the picture number nine is going to cause more damage than the picture number three. Again, that's just an inference I'm making. I could totally be wrong about that. Okay, and then next... We went over this tsunami together. This one you are going to do on your own. I'll show you where to do that shortly. And then we talked about this earthquake right here. You're going to do this one on your own. Okay, so first off, let me show you. This is what your handout is going to look like and you are going to type directly on the handout. Um, I did a picture right here, so you can't type right there. You're going to have to type below it, but you are going to answer the three questions. What do you observe? What questions do you have? And what inferences can you make? Okay, we did number five together, so you really only have to do it on number eight, but um, you can compare them like we did as well. And then right here, no, I did just show you that one. The two, the tsunami right here versus this one. Okay, and then you have, I believe it's five, yes, five questions. How do choices impact people when it comes to natural disasters? Now, I want you to specifically think about this man right here. What choice did he make? It appears like he made the choice to stay at home instead of evacuating. So, how do choices impact people when it comes to natural disasters? And again, I would focus more on the evacuation aspect. Okay, number two, do people have a choice to protect themselves from natural disasters? It relates to question one a whole lot. Number three, have those choices changed over time? Here with number three, I want you to think about the technology that we have available today versus the technology that we had even like five or 10 years ago. So think about that. Number four, after going through a recovery process, do you believe people take time to reflect on their choices? So, once they've had time to clean up after a tornado or clean up after a flood or a fire or whatever, do people think about, well, if I would have done this, then maybe this would have happened. Do people reflect? And number five, how will those choices determine future decisions? Okay, so the choices, this reflection right here, the choices that they made versus maybe the choices that they should have made how will those determine their future decisions? Hopefully they will. Okay, before I let you go, I want to show you a natural disaster map by state. 
So now these are obviously not the only natural disasters, but these are the most common natural disasters by state. I am going to move this so that you can see. So this I find interesting that Alaska, their most common natural disaster is a wildfire. That I found very interesting. Um, we're right here, obviously. Ours is the tornado. Okay. Um, let me see which other one. I don't really think that anything else really. Well, well, no, I don't think any of the others really surprised me. Um, maybe Texas. I might probably. I probably would have thought hurricanes instead of tornadoes. So that one's kind of interesting. So I just thought that this was really interesting. Okay, so your assignment, don't forget, this is what it looks like. It is a Google Doc so that you can type on it. Again, these are screenshots. You cannot type right next to it. You have to type under this, okay? Okay, guys, see you later.